Hi everyone! It's me again, Waini Butay, and together with me is my friend, Mimi. For today's video, we will be discussing and demonstrating to you the routine newborn procedures that can be done after the EINC or the Essential Intrapartum and Newborn Care. These procedures are usually done after the first 90 minutes to 6 hours of life of the baby and after the initial breastfeeding. This procedure includes, first, the application or administration of our erythromycin on the eyes of the baby, then after which the first physical examination and weighing of the baby, then after which the application and administration of our BCG, HEPA B vaccine, and vitamin K, and lastly, our core care. For our materials, weighing scale, gloves, syringe, alcohol, tape measure, Vitamin K, DCG, Hepa B vaccine, erythromycin gel, our alcohol swabs, and for our cord care, our povidin iodine. We should wash our hands prior to the procedure. Then wear our gloves. Administer the erythromycin gel on both eyes. Do not wash away the antimicrobial. Eye prophylaxis is given to prevent any gonorrheal infection that could be transmitted to the baby during the birthing process which could potentially cause blindness. And after which, you should proceed to the first or the initial physical examination and the weighing of the baby. Thoroughly examine the baby, check for any birth injuries, malformation, or defects such as bumps on one or both sides of the head, bruises, swelling on the buttocks, abnormal positioning of the legs which may happen after breech presentation delivery, or asymmetrical arm movement, or arm that does not move. Next is the measurement of the anthropometric measurements of the baby, which includes the head circumference, the chest circumference, abdominal circumference, arms, legs, and the length of the baby. Using our tape measure, we will now measure the head circumference of the baby, starting from the glabella, going around. It's 26 and a half centimeters. At birth, the head circumference should be at 35 cm and should be monitored routinely during the first 3 years of life, measured over the most prominent part of the occiput and just above the supraorbital ridge. Next is the measurement of the chest. You should take note here that the head circumference is 2 cm larger than the chest circumference. Then next is the abdomen. Then the arms, the legs, and lastly, we will measure the length of the baby. Assuming that we have an infantometer, the Steady part is at the head part and the movable part is the foot part and we should be measuring it and the usual height or the normal height for newborns or is 50 centimeters. And lastly, the way of the baby. The usual weight of the baby or at birth is supposed to be 3.4 kilograms. Record all the data that you have gathered and now we shall now proceed to the administration of our vitamin K, BCG, and HEPA B vaccines. Vitamin K administration. Inject a single dose of vitamin K 1 MGIM. If parents decline intramuscular injection, offer oral vitamin K as a second line.
Next is the administration of HEPA-B vaccine. Inject hepatitis B vaccine intramuscularly. Hepatitis B vaccine is a killed inactivated vaccine which can be given at birth intramuscularly with a dosage of 0.5 ml and follows two schedule. First schedule is 016, 0 meaning at birth, 1 meaning 1 month after the first administration, 6 meaning 6 months from the first injection, and 0, 1, 2 plus 1 booster a year after the third dose. Adverse reactions include pain in the injection site, fever, and allergic reactions. And lastly, the administration of BCG vaccine which is given intradermally. BCG vaccine is a live attenuated vaccine and it is therefore given as a single dose ideally administered on the right deltoid intradermally if given at birth for uniformity. It is recommended to prevent extra pulmonary TB. The dose is 0.05 ml for children less than 12 years of age. Adverse reaction includes WIPOS which includes wheel formation, induration, postular appearance, alteration, and scar. Record all the data and the vaccines that were given. Once done, we should help the mother initiate breastfeeding. If not successful, we should teach her other alternative methods that can be done. And lastly, cord care. Wash hands again and put another set of gloves. Put nothing on the stump. Fold the diaper below the stump. Keep cord stump loosely covered with clean cloth. If the stump is soiled, wash it again with clean water and soap, dry it thoroughly with clean cloth. Explain to the mother that she should seek care if umbilicus is red or draining with pus. Teach the mother to treat local umbilical infection three times a day. Wash hands with clean water and soap. Gently wash off pus and crust with boiled and cooled water and soap. Dry the area with clean cloth. Paint with gentian violet. Wash hands. If pus or redness worsen or does not improve in two days, refer urgently to the hospital. After the court care, we should take note of the following. First, do not apply any bandage on the abdomen or the stump. Next is to do not apply any substance or medicine on the stump. And lastly, to do not or avoid any necessary touching of the stump. And there you have it, the routine newborn procedures that can be done after the EINC or the essential intrapartum care, which include the administration or the application of our topical erythromycin gel, the first physical examination and weighing of the baby, then the administration of our BCG HEPA B vaccines and vitamin K, and lastly, core care. Thank you for watching the video. See you again next week. Bye!